I'm sick of bowing to my enemy, feel a in their energy. I'm sick of lying about the enemy, I'm full of anger. It's the wisdom that's consuming me. Got me suppressing my power while Satan devours. Your pastor weak, mislead the sheep, he been a coward. The promise teeth, it hit the streets. To reach that number, you can keep the gift. I couldn't see you, my oppressor. Open up the streets and my heart burns the teeth. The lack of pressure, wake up and smell depression. So in season lust, now I see trees with no direction. I mean, gone with the wind, different doctrines and obsessions. Dirty water out the faucet, popping bottles in the section. Call that VIP, very impudent people. Slavery, this the sequel. Traded chains for chains and church gave you the needle. That's a lethal injection of mind infected with lies. From fornication, not idolatry, let's cut these soul ties. I'm killing the vibe, ain't no love for Babylon. Nope, I can't let you speak, can't let these heathens Babylon. Talking down on God's chosen. You can't tell me that I ain't. You can't tell me that we can't. Change the minds and change the lives of the saints. Hold out a bridge like Legos. Can't put on these strings, Geppetto. Your past is softer than Jello. But God got a plan to make him a man. It's called repentance. Let that Holy Spirit burn without a question. No suggestions. Got a text at one time. That's the message for real. I want my people free. So long in captivity, we cry for vengeance, free our souls, you give us vengeance, we won't bow no I'm more. I'm sick of bowing to my enemy, feel a in their energy, I'm sick of lying about the enemy, I'm full of anger. It's the wisdom that's consuming me. Got me suppressing my power while Satan devours. Your pastor weak, mislead the sheep. He been a coward. The promise teeth, it hit the streets. To reach that number, you can keep the gift. I couldn't see you, my oppressor. Open up the streets and my heart burns the teeth. The I, I want freedom from Edom. I'm to be bleeding. I, I want Israel to see me. Make, make them out of believer. I, I want Moab to lick the dust. A ball from my sneakers. Make the nations receive it. Ride an eye for the and it's cool. 
I know you think we playing. Read the words in the Bible and they say we winning. My people miseducated. They really think you with them. But you showed us time after time that you really sinning. So we had to pull up and post and post. Hit the streets straight from the door. Feel like I did this before. You see sin, just let me know. Leviticus 5 and 1. Casting down, season 4. It's time to pick up and go. Free this world, I know that it's low. Cause we kingdom seeking. Yeah, we kingdom reaching. Providing godly solutions to help relieve our people. And you on birth, you on burn for your constant evil. And this I turn, this I turn to reign over heathen. The tree of life in the garden, where this here the sequel. Pure gold on our road, reach the 12, cross the globe, and let them know. Just like Moses, let us go. Serve our God, yeah, our God. And these hours, hours alone. Now I'm gone, 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 gone. County deputies seized approximately seven pounds of marijuana, guns. Right, Jackson police are working to solve a double murder. Detectives found two bodies on Redmond Avenue. An armed robbery occurred late Saturday night at this gas station on West. Say residents in the area say they heard gunshots around 10 or 11 Saturday night, but didn't think much of it. Shots were fired and at least one person injured in Jackson. Police say there were shots fired into a house in the 3000 block of Main area. Say they heard gunshots around 10. What they fight for? Tell me what they fight for. All money and drugs, that's what it was. That's what you dying for. Cook it up in the kitchen, life sentence. That's what you striving for. You trap, you trap, you trap, you trap, you trap, you trap. Come trap your fix, get your licks. Cause this White House was built with bricks. To sell your soul, you get that gold, you get that dope, you get them kicks. They tell you whatever. To keep you in sin forever. The all the money, the drugs got you trapped. You trap, you trap, you trap. I ain't. You want that American dream, don't you? You want to ride clean, sipping that purple lean, don't you? You want that Jesus peace that they ain't never seen, don't you? Run them numbers up, why them whole scream, don't you? Uh, but it come with a price. Rick Jane, yeah, they cold in the ice. They make a sign on the dotted line. Uh, they give you your life. But not believe, now you're rolling the dice. You want to shine, right? You want to shine, right? Where your soul, I need it, uh, all your goals, you reach it. Uh. Turn the block, hit the corners, but it ain't for the rock. This for the Lord, this for my people that's getting destroyed. This for the men that's living like boys. This for the women that's living like whores. I got a bone to pick. Running the zone to pick the road. West sides, no bricks. America, KKKA, damn. Living off the pig, going ham. Pick your coat, cut it if you can. No hope, rolling with the plan. White man dream, that's a scam. And all we do is follow masks. All we do is follow pastors. Let's to the slaughter. We need to follow the damn. What they fight for? Tell me what they fight for. All money and drugs. That's what it was. That's what you died for. Cook it up in the kitchen. Life sentence. That's what you striving for. You trap. 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 You fix. You so rich. Cause this white house was built with bricks. To sell your soul. You get that gold. You get that dope. You get them kicks. They tell you whatever. To keep you in sin forever. The all the money, the drugs got you trapped. You trap, you trap, you trap. Money, car, cold, hold drugs. What you living for? The cop ran them down. Trigger happy, what they shoot up for? Marching, they want justice. You want peace, but it never come. Judgment from the Lord. I pray you repent before your time come. The trap out, that's your hangout. Till you crap out, till you lose your life. Look good, he was bugging. Loco shot a Draco, took a life. Like, damn, bam, kicking the dough, kicking the dough with a no knock one. You were sleeping in the bed, baby girl on the couch with a different red bingo move, get down. Like, damn, man, tell me what's the worth it. Friend to the father, why? When shots rang out, about a hundred rounds, when they shot up the couch and the blood ran down. Damn, now that's your daughter. Now she did land on the couch. You jumped up, cocked your clock back, grabbed your dose, and tried to run. Damn, so now you trapped. Ran to the back of the house, no way out. Laid on the floor, shot through the door, then tried to reload. Uh, prison, he ain't going back. Reload, then got the hammer back. Put the gun to his head, bent down to his knee, and blew his own damn brains out. Down, what they fight for? Tell me what they fight for. All money and drugs, that's what it was. That's what you died for. Cook it up in the kitchen, life sentence. That's what you striving for. You trap, you trap, you trap, you trap, you trap, you trap. Come trap your fix, get so rich, cause this White House was built with bricks to sell your soul. You get that gold, you get that dope, you get them kicks, they tell you whatever. To keep you in sin forever. The all the money, the drugs got you trapped. You trap, you trap, you trap. Whoever's giving out these record deals. But all this violence here, people are ducking for cover. Children are killing children. And there's no effort into boycotting anybody. 
Look how hard they're going to stop us. YouTube stopping us. Uh, PayPal stopping us. Facebook stopping us. All the energy they're putting into stopping us. Who is not causing any harm to anybody. All right, Shalom fam. We're going to rise and face the Eastern Center of Prayers. Men of Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets down. Oh, glorious Father God, we come before you humbly, Father God, and we ask you, Father, as you continue to build us up and guide us, Father God, as you continue to allow us to behold wondrous things out your law, Father God. We pray, Father God, that you give us the spirit of servants, Father God, that we may be able to serve you first and foremost, Father God, and then serve each other as a nation, Father God. We pray, Father God, that you may destroy our enemies. All of those that hate us, Father God, confound them, Father God. Destroy them in their wicked devices that they try to attempt against us, Father God. Father God, we know that in these last days you will keep us, Father God, all of those who are weak, Father God, all of those who are sick, Father God. Father God, we know you protect us. We pray for all of those who, any of uh, those sisters who are with child, Father God, any of those who are weak in spirit, Father God, build them up and give them a mind to seek after you, Father God. We pray that you send in more laborers to your harvest, Father, that those laborers may be able to do your will here on earth, Father God. And most of all, Father God, we pray that you reign forever here on earth. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen. I'm good, sis. All right. Hey, Shalom, uh, Most High in Christ, bless Officer Jadiel. And to my left, I got Officer Onias. To my right, Officer Alicia. Dang, his mic up loud. He be whispering, y'all, so we turn his mic all the way up. You know, huh? Hey, you don't be whispering that much. Sheesh. Dang. All right. So, uh, the topic, the topic is salvation for the servants. Salvation for the servants. Um, as a nation, right, many of us haven't learned uh, the mindset of servitude. Uh, we often view being a servant as something that's less or uh, something beneath us. Um, we don't we don't view that as a role we should play, right? And, and part of it may go back to slavery or being selfish, right? But today we're going to examine what that means to be a servant uh, and what, what mindset we should have. Um, so the first thing that I had, right, is... Uh, what is a servant, right? And, and when most of us think servant, right? Can I get that picture? Pull that picture up, start it off. Most of us, you know, at least for me, I was like, what is a servant? You know, this was the first thing that came to mind. Let me know when they can see it. Um, this is what came to mind when I said servant. I was like, huh, who's a servant I know of that the people would know about? So most people, when they think when they think a servant, they might think of like a butler. I said, who's a famous butler that people know? And I said, my man Jeffrey. They can see it, right? Okay. My man Jeffrey from the Fresh Prince. We're going to look at him real quick, you know, so you could get a, a servant in your mind. So, you know, when people think servant, this is something you can relate to, most of us, right? Uh, if you grew up in the States, you probably watched the show. And if you watch this show, nobody watched this and say, you know who I want to be on the show? Jeffrey. No, no, nobody was watching and saying that. Everybody said they wanted to be Will. Maybe you was Carlton. You know what I'm saying? If you a sister, maybe you want to be Hillary, right? Or Ashley, you know, or Aunt Viv. But you never said, yo, I want to be Jeffrey. And that shows you our mindset. You know, it shows you our mindset. We never wanted to be the one that was taking care of everybody else. So give me uh, Jeremiah 2 and 14. We're going to go there. Thank you. Drop the image. Jeremiah 2 and 14. Actually, no, Second Peter 3. Got to start there, man. Yeah, yeah, 2 Peter 3 and 1. Let's read that. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 3 and verse 1. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, and both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the, of the Lord and Savior. So when Peter was writing this to the people, he wanted to take their minds and put it back to the holy prophets and the commandment of the apostles, right? So even in this, there's servitude, right? He, he thought about what the people needed, and he provided it to them in the form of a letter. Go ahead. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. So in these days, there's people that say, hey, man, well, I'm just going to do what I want because 
at the end of the day, Christ ain't coming back. There's not going to be no destruction on earth. Everything's going to be the way that it is. And that's how people's minds think, right? Their mind is like, hey, it's just going to be it's going to be what it is. There's no need for me to uh, reform myself or change because this is just how life is. I'm just going to go through the motions. But Peter didn't want the people to be that way, right? Him being a servant, he wanted to change the people's mindset back to the Father. So let's go to Jeremiah 2 and 14 now. Jeremiah 2 and 14. I always like to start there because, you know, it's a good example of, of what we're trying to do with every class, right? We got to reform our minds and get back to the way our forefathers thought. Read that. The book of Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 14. Is Israel a servant? Is he a home-born slave? Why is he spoiled? So when we think of servant or servitude, a lot of us, the first thing we go to is slavery, right? That's the first thing that happens in our mind. We say, I, if I'm a servant, I'm a slave. You know, there, there's no way I could be a servant and be a king or be a leader. That doesn't make any sense to me. I'm a slave, right? So give me um, Ecclesiastes 10 and 7 real quick. Let's look at that. Ecclesiastes 10 and 7. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, and verse 7. Solomon says something interesting here. I have seen servants upon horses. So he said he saw servants upon horses. Go ahead. And princes walking as servants upon the earth. So what he's saying here is the world has been turned upside down. He said, I've seen the people that are supposed to be servants. They're riding horses, right? Who that nigga on the name, right, is a, is a good example, right, when you watch Django. But... The point is he's saying, I see Esau ruling. I see these other nations ruling, and then he sees us walking upon the earth, meaning we're not riding the horses. We're not in a position of leadership. So we've fallen. So we got to examine that. What, what does that mean, right? Give me uh, the definition of servant really quickly. Let's look at that. Definition of servant. So we're going to get this one, and then we're going to get the, the other one from 1828 too. Let's read this one first. Yes, sir. Uh, this is dictionary.com. Servant. A person employed by another, especially to perform domestic duties. Okay, so, okay, servant could be somebody who has a job, right? The next one? A person in, in the service of another. Okay, a person in the service of another, right? Go ahead. A person employed by the government. Okay, so these are some definitions of servant, right? Let's look up uh, at the 1828 uh, definition of servant. Let's pull that one up now. Let's see uh, how it differed. It's a little more lengthy here. Okay, this is the Webster's Dictionary, 1828. Servant, definition one, a person, male or female, that attends... You got to scroll down a little bit, sis. Thank that, you. that attends another for the purpose of performing many offices for him, or who is employed by another for such offices or for other labor, and is subject to his command. The word is cor correlative to master. Servant differs from slave. Interesting, right? It says servant differs from slave. Go ahead. As a servant's subjection to a master is voluntary, the slave's is not. So a slave didn't have a choice but to listen to the master. Go ahead. Every slave is a servant, but every servant is not a slave. Mm. Every slave is a servant, right? They serve a master, right? They attend unto somebody. But every servant is not a slave. Some people are ser in servitude by choice. So us, right? We had a choice. The Lord gave us a choice, right? He gave us a choice. He said either uh, you're going to follow me or you're not going to follow me, right? Re keep reading. Watch. Servants are of various kinds, as household or domestic servants, mm -hmm. menial servants, laborers. Mm, interesting. Laborers. Go ahead. Who are hired by the day, week, or other term, and do not reside with their employers, or if they board in the same house, are employed abroad and not in the domestic services. Uh apprentices who are bound for a term of years to serve a master for the purpose of learning his trade or occupation. All right, scroll down a little bit. Um, okay, read the second definition. Definition two. One in a state of subjection. So if you're in a state of subjection, you're also a servant. Mm -hmm. mm, okay, because the Lord said we're servants, right? Keep Give me uh, definition seven. Definition seven. One who yields obedience to another. The saints are called servants of God mm. or of righteousness, and the wicked are called the servants of sin. Interesting. We're going we're gonna to observe some of that today, right? So ser servitude also could, or being a servant, you can be a servant unto something specific, right? And outside of a person, mm. you can serve righteousness, you can serve wickedness. All right, so let's go back to the scriptures. So Deuteronomy 28, and give me verse 15. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, 
to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Curse shall so, thou... So stop there. So the Lord said there was a condition in your servitude. He said, if you want to follow me. So what did he give you in this? He gave you a choice. He gave you an option. He said, hey, you could be obedient to me or you cannot be obedient to me. Give me verse 47. So what did we choose, right? We all know we went into slavery, right? We went on the slave ships. That's our history. There may be new people online who, you know, who, who never thought about this in the Bible. But verse 47 explains something, right? Did we follow God or did we not follow God? Verse 47 will show you. Watch. Verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness. So what happened with us as a people is we didn't serve the Lord thy God with joyfulness. It wasn't a pleasurable thing for us to love our neighbor as we loved ourselves. It wasn't a pleasurable thing for us to say, you know what, I'm going to keep the feast days. I'm not going to murder. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to slander my brother. That wasn't pleasurable for us. Give me Isaiah 30 and 12 real quick. We're going to come back here. That wasn't pleasurable for us. So when we read this, right, we think about what were we servants unto? Because to this day, prior to, prior to you coming in here or listening to any of this, you're a servant regardless of the choice, uh, regardless of what you feel. Maybe you're not a servant unto Christ, but you're a servant unto the devil, mm -hmm. right? So we all in servitude to something. That's the point. Isaiah 30 and verse 12. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 12. Wherefore, thus said the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon. So our people, we trust in oppression and we stay on it. We say, you know what? I'm going to keep relying on the police uh, system and say, yo, this has to change. I'm going to keep relying on my dollar bill to change. I'm going to keep relying on this government to fix the problems of civil rights or inequality because I believe that they're actually going to do something about it. Our people, they trust in oppression. They serve that thing, right? Read, go back to Deuteronomy 28, verse 47. So when we were in the world, we trusted these things. We said, you know what? This school system is going to help me out. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to get this degree. Hey, I'm going to join uh, this, this armed forces, right, whatever branch I join, because I believe this is going to be the way out. Hey, I'm going to sell these drugs, and I believe, hey, if I get caught, it is what it is. I'm going to have enough money where this dollar, this dollar bill is going to get me out of the situation I'm in. Read verse 47. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. For the abundance of all things. So what was supposed to happen is we were supposed to be like Jeffrey for the Lord. That's what was supposed to happen. We were supposed to say, whatever you need, Lord, and do it with pleasure, right? Make uh, enjoyment out of it. But now it became something that we hated. We, we were like, yo, I don't like this, this discipline that the Lord is putting upon me. I don't like the fact that I got to listen to the Lord and do what he's telling me to do. So what did the Lord say? Okay, you don't want to serve me. Read verse 48 now. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Mm, the Lord says something. He says you're going to serve your enemies now. So he said, you don't want to serve me. Well, I'll still make you a servant, but just unto your enemy. You're going to have to serve these people for what? Which the Lord shall send against thee uh -huh. in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. So the Lord said, okay, you don't want to serve me for everything in abundance. How about you serve this man and you'll be destitute? How about you serve him? And you don't have everything you want. You don't get everything you want. You have to work for every single thing. And that's the situation we find ourselves in. Watch. Let's, let's uh, pull up that video, right? This is from a, a movie. I'll probably talk over it so it doesn't, so we don't get shut down. We're going to play a little bit of it. But the, the key point is what he says right at the beginning. Go ahead and hit play when, when they can see it. Check, check. Yeah, so we're going to look at this video. Uh, give IT a second and pull it up. They're working on it, but make sure you're making. I'm a house nigga. A good one. All right, jump back to 106. 106. Let's jump back to 106. Uh, let's do 105 and then hit play. From there, I want y'all to hear what he say. This is this is what we were forced to become. You know, stole our food. And now you asking for a job? Back in making. I'm a house nigga. A good one. He said, I'm a house nigga, a good one. Don't you ever use that word, son. That's a white man's word. So, this, man, this is his mentor and servitude. Didn't your father you ever teach any better? the butler, he's, he's going to get trained up on how to be a butler. 
So you see this? Slow down. Yep, he's telling him how, how to be how to serve his enemy. Gotta look through the eyes. See what's happening here? So as a people, is, right? This want. is what we've we've been through. Go ahead. Yeah, you can cut it off. You can cut it off. Right? So this is what we've been through. He's teaching him how to clean the chandelier. Right? He said, he said, I'm a house nigga, a good one. A good one. Right? And we don't even realize that we serve sin, that we serve in Esau. And in everything we do, whether you were in the Navy, right? Whether you were in the Army, whether you were in your, you went to college, right? They taught you how to be a good house nigga. Sports, whatever, whatever you think about. You, you were just trained up to do, to serve them. So now coming back to the Bible, we got to learn how to serve the Lord. Read that again. Verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in what of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he have destroyed thee. Now give me Exodus 5 and verse 15. So the Lord said that was going to happen in these times. But even in Exodus, right, we were in the same position. And we had to come up out of it. Exodus 5 and verse 15. The book of Exodus chapter 5 and verse 15. Then the officers of the children of Israel came and cried unto Pharaoh. So they're crying unto Pharaoh. They're saying, Pharaoh, this police brutality is too much. This, this uh, armed forces is too much. These student loans is too much, Pharaoh. You're putting too much on us. Read. Saying, wherefore dealest thou thus with thy servants? With thy what? With thy servants. And that's what we are here. But many people say, oh, I'm not a slave. Slavery is over. Go ahead. There is no straw given unto thy servants. And they say to us, make brick. And behold, thy servants are beaten. So, hey, put yourself up by your bootstraps, but we ain't going to give you no boots. It's the same thing in these times. Go ahead. But the fault is in thy own people. Mm -hmm. But you said, ye are idle. Ye are idle. Therefore you say, let us go and do sacrifice to the Lord. So Pharaoh said, I don't give a damn. Y'all better get it figured out. Right? Y'all better get it figured out. Give me a Lamentations 5 and 8. In the time of Babylon, same thing. Lamentations 5 and 8. We got to be able to look at this. So we are serving something, right? We are serving something. And the question is, what are you serving? Lamentations 5 and 8. The book of Lamentations, chapter 5 and verse 8. Servants have ruled over us. There is none that doth deliver us out of their hand. So that's where we at. We got the people who are supposed to be serving us, ruling over us, putting us in positions where we have to listen to them, we have to do what they say. Give me Leviticus 25 and verse 55 now. Leviticus 25 and verse 55. The book of Leviticus chapter 25 and verse 55. Yep. Excuse me. For unto me the children of Israel are servants. So we are servants unto God. That's what God said. God said we are servants. Read it one more time. Verse 55. For unto me the children of Israel are servants. We are supposed to be God's servants. But we don't even understand what that means. Because we've been raised up in a way where Hey, you take care of Esau, and you don't take care of each other. You don't serve each other. You don't even think of servitude as a position you should be in, right? Because you look at that. You even look at when he said, I'm a, I'm a good uh, house nigga. Look at the effort he was putting in to uh, serve the white man. But before he knew it was a job opportunity, he was stealing from him. If you watch the whole clip, he, he broke into the window. His hand got cut, and that, and that brother was patching him up. But he was trying to steal. He was trying to find a way to take care of himself. He wasn't thinking about no servitude. He just, it was opportunity. Say, oh, I could work here and I could get paid? Okay, I'll do that. It's opportunistic servitude. And that's, that's what we do man, much of the time. We're not thinking constantly on how can we be better servants for God, for each other. Our mindset is like, ah, you, you need me to do something right now? I'll be a servant right now. But it's not, it's not who we are. We got to make it a fabric of our being. Right? Read, that, read again. Because God is telling you that's who you are. You're my servants. On this earth, everything you do is supposed to be about me and for me. Just like Jeffrey in the first prince. You don't see him have a scene where Jeffrey's like, yo, I'm finna go to the Bahamas and that's what it's going to be. We're going to do a whole episode or three, right, on Jeffrey. And he's not serving nobody. Nah, you saw him making breakfast, right? You saw him running, uh, running the kids down, making sure they had their lunch, uh, mentoring people in the house, taking care, uh, talking to Uncle Phil, doing stuff for Aunt Viv. That was his mindset. It was, it was servitude 24-7. Read that again. For unto me the children of Israel are servants. They are my servants who are brought forth out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Give me Isaiah 41 and verse 8. So we are servants unto God. That's what we are. But we've been caught up here serving our enemies, 
saying, you know what? This is uh, this is better than serving God. I like this better. I like this liquor. I like these pants. If you're a sister, right? I like this uh, adultery I'm committing. I prefer these things than being righteous and serving God. I prefer this evil servitude versus the righteous servitude I'm supposed to be in. Isaiah 41 and 8. The book of Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 8. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Go ahead. Verse 9. Verse 9. Thou, whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant. I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. So the Lord said, you continue to be my servant. You just don't want to be. You don't want to be obedient to me. You don't want to do what I'm asking you to do. You don't want to put effort into that day in and day out. You'd rather serve things here. You don't have joyfulness in me. And some of us, even though we're in the truth, we don't have this mind to say, you know what? I'm supposed to serve the Lord every single day. You know how I know? Because we take days off, right? Our, our, our character switches up because we don't have the mind to say, you know what? Every single day I got to serve the Lord. I got to find time and opportunity and a way to serve the Lord because that is my purpose for being here. It's to, it's to serve the Lord. Give me uh, Isaiah 44 and 1 now. Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 1. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant. And Israel, whom I have chosen. So Jacob was the servant of God. Israel was chosen by God, right? Same, same thing he's making reference to, right? Us as a people, we are the servants of God. We are the servants of God. But again, we don't want that. So what, what are the attributes of a servant? We're going to look at some of them, right? Give me uh, Exodus 32 and verse 13. Look at this first one. It's going to be a lot of scriptures with the word servant in there. I looked it up. It's, it's probably over a thousand. Probably over a thousand, but still the idea of us being a servant, it ain't in our head daily. You know, we just think that means we go to church. You know? Uh-huh. Say, say it on the mic. They can't hear you. They can't hear you. You know what I'm saying? I know I know in uh I know in Hattiesburg they said things without microphones. You know what I'm saying? Because right. they didn't they didn't have those down there. They but had them. A little bit. A little bit? Okay. All right. Go no, ahead. The plug the corded ones, right? Hmm? Oh yeah. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, they said they're looking for comfortable servitude. That's what it was. So we li- we'll serve as long as it's comfortable for us. You know what I'm saying? And not, like I said, in the comfort zone. So the servitude ain't about who you're serving. It's about you looking like you're serving. You know? It's like when you, uh, you know, I don't know if anybody ever worked in fast food. You worked in fast food? Yes. Yeah, yeah. How you used to, how you used to uh, greet the customers? Uh, you know what I'm saying? No, it depends. I guess, you know, you just give them a little fake smile. Like you kid, right? Hey. Yeah, yeah, like you kid. You know what I'm saying? Then, yeah. like, then after that, I was like, all right. Yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying? You know then you go saying? in the back, you're like, sheesh. You know what I'm saying? You're like, yeah, I'm, I'm about to make your food great. Yeah. Go back and slap it together. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Wrap it up all bad. Yeah, and throw it in the bag. Hopefully they don't look in it. Yeah, I was telling, <laughs> look, man, I was telling brothers at Burger King, brothers used to put holes in the bottom of the bun and put extra ketchup in. It's evil, evil going on in there. What? You know what I'm saying? They put a hole. The brother's going to make me reveal the wickedness that's happened in the Burger King. They put the hole in the bottom of the bun and put extra sauce in the hole. So when you picked it up, if you took it out the wrap, it was going to fall on your lap. Ah, damn. It's wicked. You know what I'm saying? It looked like servitude. Hey. It looked good, but it ain't. Exodus 32 and verse 13. The book of Exodus, chapter 32 and verse brother's 17. like, you was doing that to people? It was this woman who used to come through and order 10 burgers for her dog. They used to do her dirty. All right, read that. Exodus chapter it's 32. 10 burgers for her and 10 burgers for the dog. Go ahead. Exodus I'm chapter still mad about that. That's why I'm saying. Look, look, look. This is why you got to serve God 10 times harder, right? Because you, you, when, you when the white man pulled up to, to wherever you was working, the restaurant, and they switched up the order, and you had to memorize it, and you go in the back, and they complaining, you got it done. But when somebody say something in the truth, you you pissed off. Go ahead. Yeah, it wasn't when we went out to eat one time. It was, wasn't our sister who remembered every like a, all the brothers' order just off of mine. Off of you know, uh, yeah, in memory. Yeah, you know, it was like thirty people. Yep. You know, but you know, if you had that type of work for Esau for they job for that job, you right. know, what I'm saying, what can you bring to the truth? Exactly, that's the point. I, I, Exodus thirty-two and verse thirteen. The book of Exodus, chapter thirty-two and verse seventeen. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people, that's that. I don't think that's Exodus thirty-two and. 13, not in my Bible. What you got? Okay, all right. Praise God. Thir- uh, verse 13. Verse 13. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants. Thy what? Thy servants, uh-huh. to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and saidest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed. 
and they shall inherit it forever. So these men, our forefathers that I mentioned often, right? I wanted to start here. The Lord called them servants. Abraham was a servant. He followed what the Lord said to a T, right? It wasn't, it wasn't that, uh, uh, you know, they, they did evil. And, and if you examine their lives and look at the scriptures, but the point is when they were commanded to do something, they did it, right? They, they were commanded to do something. They did it. They took care of business. They took care of their kids, right? They dealt right, uh, uh, you know, in some regard by the women that they dealt with, right? There was evil. There was evil. There was lies told and certain things of that nature. But overall, they kept the laws of God. And many of us, many of us, when the Lord tells us something, we read in the Bible, we slothful. We don't move on it. Abraham took his son. He said, you know what? I'm going to go sacrifice my son. I'm going to do what you told me to do. I'm going I'm to follow what you told me to do. Isaac followed what the Lord told him to do. Israel followed what the Lord told him to do. But in these times, many of us look at things like it's optional. I don't really got to follow the Lord in that regard. Oh, you know what? The Bible says I got to be at new moon. I don't feel like it today. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like it today, man. You know, I'm not really, I'm not really feeling that new moon stuff. I got to get dressed. I got to come from work and put on my clothes and drive to the school. I'd rather lay down. I'd rather just lay at the house. Give me Luke 7 and verse 2. Luke 7 and 2. This was something, you know, that I that I find interesting right here, where the Lord was talking to a man. Let's see what he says to him. Luke 7 and verse 2. The book of Luke, chapter 7 and verse 2. We're going to read down to verse 10. And a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. And when he had heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying, that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loveth our nation, and he hath built us a synagogue. So they were saying this man is worthy, right, for to be healed, right? This servant is worthy to be healed. Go ahead. Then Jesus went with them. And when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. So the centurion said, you know what? I'm not worthy for you to come and enter under my roof. Go ahead. Then G, uh, verse 7, Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. Go ahead. For I also am a man set under authority. So he, so he understood the power that Christ had with servants. He said, Wherefore, neither thought I myself to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. He understood this, right? He's going to explain what he understood. Read verse 8 from the top. Verse 8, For I also am a man set under authority. Having under me soldiers. So he said, I have under me soldiers. Go ahead. And I say unto one, go. And he goeth. He tells his, sir, his soldiers, go, and they go. Go ahead. And to another, come, and he cometh. He tells them to come, and they come. Go ahead. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Go ahead. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at them, and turned them about, and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. See, what it is, is we don't understand that it's that simple. It should be that simple. That's what Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob understood. Israel understood. It was that simple. The Lord says, go, you go. He say, come, you come. But we don't, we, it's not that simple for us because we've been indoctrinated in Babylon. We don't enjoy serving the Lord. So when somebody says go, you don't want to go. You think about all the reasons why you should not go. That tells you you ain't got the right mindset. That's what we're trying to repent from because that's what leads to Deuteronomy 28, verse 48, where we got to serve our enemies because the Lord says, you know what? You don't enjoy going when I say go. You fight back. I tell you, go, the scripture pops in your head. I was uh, talking to the officers about that the other day. Every time, you know, as you come in here, you start to learn the Bible, different scriptures will pop in your head when you're about to do something that's against the Bible. So it'll pop in your head and you'll say, you know what? Uh, I'm going to do the opposite. That is an example to yourself that you should be able to look at and say, you know what? I don't enjoy going when the Lord say go. So when this man understood the power that Christ had on earth and the power that his father had, he understood all he had to do was say that that man be healed and it would be done because he had that level of authority. But we don't view Christ that way. We think it's optional. We think we don't have a choice. Read verse 9 again. Verse 9. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at them and turned them about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Go ahead. And that they were sent. Returning, and they that were sent, returning to the house, found the servant whole that had been sick. So when they got there, the servant was whole. He was no longer sick. Amazing. You know why? Because Christ said that it would be done. 
And that was it. That was a level of authority he had. He didn't have to question it. He didn't have to go to the house and say, ah, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? He ain't come tap him on the forehead three times and do the crisscross with his legs like he did somebody else. You know what I'm saying? So he ain't going to be good. You know? He ain't spit and rub some dirt on it and put it on his eyeball. No, he understood. All Christ had to do was say, that's what it's going to be. And it happened. He had that level of obedience and that level of faith. So he said, he's going to be healed. Give me Philippians 2 and verse 5 now. Philippians 2 and verse 5. So we overcomplicate it, right? And I wanted to start here because that's something we got to have as servants. We got to understand our Father that's in heaven, we say it in the Lord's Prayer. We say, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So we pray about it, but we don't believe it. Philippians 2 and verse 5. The book of Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Yeah. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, yep. who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, yep. but made himself of no reputation. And took upon him the form of a servant. The form of a what? The form of a servant. Okay. It was made in the likeness of men. Go ahead. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So a servant is obedient. Because Christ, when he was a servant, he was obedient unto death. He didn't need to be told over and over and over again about what was going on. He just listened and he did it. And that's the reality of the situation. Many of us, we looking for a... Uh, uh, we're looking for ways that we can skate what needs to be done. We don't want to follow what the Bible said. But Christ said, you know, uh, he prayed. He said, Father, your will be done. Your will be done. And that's what we got to get to. We got to first look at our forefathers and understand that was the mindset that they had. They did what their father told them. They did what Christ told them. Luke 16 and verse 3 now. Let's look at this. The book of Luke, chapter 16 and verse three. Yep. verse 3. 13, 13, my bad. Luke chapter 16, verse 13. No servant can serve two masters, mm. for either he will hate the one and love the other. So as servants, he's saying something here. Read that one more time. No servant can serve two masters. So what are the two masters that we're dealing with, right? We talked about it earlier, right? We have things of the world and we have things in this truth. The understanding of God, the Bible. Read it one more time. No servant can serve two masters, uh -huh. for either he will hate the one and love the other. So it's telling you, you got two masters, you're going to hate one of those two masters. You're either going to hate the truth or you're going to love the truth. You're either going to hate the world or you're going to love the world. It's no in between. Go ahead. Or else he would hold to the one and despise the other. Uh -huh. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and the uncleanness and the money and the riches of this world. You can't do both. It's impossible. And many of us, we don't understand what we serve. We on the fence straddling. We think, hey, I'm going to do a little bit of things for this truth. I'm going to do enough to serve God. But you're not fully serving God. You're not doing what you need to do. And that is the difference between us and, and the servitude that the Bible is talking about. Our servitude is supposed to be fully towards the Lord. Give me Numbers 14 and verse 24. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. Let's see something right here, right? Because something is mentioned about Caleb. The book of Numbers, chapter 14, verse 24. But my servant Caleb. His what? My servant Caleb. You see how servant is listed over and over again? Go ahead. Because he had another spirit with him. He has another spirit with him. Caleb had another spirit on him. The way he moved, he's telling you it's different than everybody else. Go ahead. And hath followed me fully. He hath followed him what? And hath followed me fully. Uh-huh. Him will I bring into the land wherein, wherein to he went, and his seed shall possess it. So the Lord said, because this man has followed me fully. He ain't halfway follow. We got to get our mindsets out of halfway following the Lord. Some of us, we only want to show up when it's, when it's uh, uh, convenient, right? Like you were saying before, if there's a class during the weekend, you know you could get there, but it's going to be a little bit difficult. You say, yo, I'm not going. I'd rather pass that responsibility off. I'm not going to push myself to serve the Lord. But Caleb, he followed the Lord wholly, fully. He gave his all to following the Lord. And that's what we, we got to look at. If you're not fully following the Lord, you're going to start to hate the Lord. You're going to start to say, you know what? I don't enjoy doing this thing in the truth. You know why? Because people are requiring things of me. When I don't show up, I'm getting blasted for not showing up. People are saying things about me. My, my evaluation look crazy. You know what I'm saying? My, uh, uh, my wife is, is saying certain things to me. People in the congregation view me a certain way. I'm just going to fall back and not go all together. Because that's easier than dealing with the pain and the suffering and the progress that's needed from me. Read that again. Numbers chapter 14, verse 24. But my servant Caleb 
because he had another spirit with them and hath followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land whereunto he went, and his seed shall possess it. Give me uh, Jeremiah 7 and verse 25. So Caleb followed the Lord fully, and that's what we got to be able to do. If you're a servant of the Lord, you got to follow him, follow him in totality. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 7 and verse 25. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets. So he sent his servants, the prophets. And what did they do? Daily rising up early and sending them. They rose up daily early. Every single day, early in the morning, they got up. That's telling you their level of work ethic. These men wasn't slothful. These men wasn't sitting back waiting on somebody to say, hey, it's time for you to do something now. It's time for you to be a servant. He said, I sent these men to you, and they woke up every single day, and they did what? Read. Yet they hearkened not unto me, mm -hmm. nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. So the point is, is the people did not listen. But that didn't change the mindset of the prophets. That didn't change how they moved. They woke up every day and they served the Lord with everything they had. Give me uh, Jeremiah 25 and 4. He repeats it over and over again in the book of Jeremiah. I'm just going to get it twice so you can see. It's repeated over and over throughout the book of Jeremiah. Well, verse 4. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 25 and verse 4. And the Lord has sent unto you all his servants, the prophets. His servants, the prophets. The prophets were servants of God. Go ahead. Rising early. Rising how? And rising early. Uh-huh. And sending them. But you have not hearkened, nor inclined your ear to hear. So the prophets had a work ethic. That's what that's talking about. When they got up early and they got work done. That's got to be our mindset. We the people of this book. If we say, hey, we a prophet. You go out in the street, yo, we the prophets. We back on earth. But you don't put in no work. You're not moving like a prophet. It's telling you how the prophets move. They wholly followed the Lord and they got up and they had work ethic. Nobody had to put a battery in their back every day and say, please do this. Please do that. Can you please serve me? Can you please do what I'm asking you to do? Give me um, Sirach 33 and verse 25. The book of Sirach, chapter 33 and verse 25. If thou set thy servant to labor. If thou sent thy servant to labor. Go ahead. It's saying if you have a servant and you set him to labor, go ahead. Thou shalt find rest. Yeah. But if thou let him go idle. If you let him go idle. If you got a servant, you let him go idle. Go ahead. He shall seek liberty. He shall look for freedom. He shall look to be released from you. That's what our people are doing when they're free. Mm. When you ain't got nothing going on in the truth. Right? I'm going to show you real quick. Proverbs, I think it's like 18 and 1. Read that real quick. I didn't have it written down, but let's look at that. When you don't got nothing to do in the truth, you're going to start to go off. That's why you got to be busy all the time. That's why your office is calling you and saying, yo, what you doing? What you working on? What you reading? Hey, why you not doing this? Why you not getting better? And many of us, we look for opportunity to be free from the Bible. So if you do that, this is what's going to happen. Proverbs 18 and 1. The book of Proverbs, chapter 18 and verse 1. Through desire a man... Having his desire to separate from God, to have free time, to do something else than what he's been called to do. Go ahead. Having separated himself. Removed himself, looking for liberty. Go ahead. Seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. That man will start to seek and intermeddle with and play around with all types of other things outside of this Bible. That's why I was saying if you had a servant, you're not supposed to give him the opportunity to, to be free or idle because he'll look for liberty. He'll look for opportunity to remove himself from you. And that's what many of us don't realize we're doing. When we look for free time, when we say, you know what, I need a break. People ask me to do something today, but I'm going to take a day off. I could do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Well, guess what? You're going to start to separate from God. Read that. Go back to Sirach and read it one more time. The book of Sirach, chapter 33 and verse 25. Yep. If thou set thy servant to labor, thou shalt find rest. Yep. But if thou let him go idle... He shall seek liberty. If you let him go idle, if you don't keep him busy, he's going to seek liberty. There's another scripture that, read that, uh, send him to labor that he be not idle. Verse 27. Verse 27, yep. Send him to labor that he be not idle. See what the Bible says? It says, send him to labor. Put him to work. Have him doing something consistently. When we read about the prophets, when we read about Caleb, he was constantly doing the work of the Lord. Whatever he asked, he was wholly following the Lord. He didn't wake up and take days off. He didn't look for a break. Many of us, we come into this truth, and we know we was in the world on go with wickedness. On go, every single day you was hitting up a different chick. 
You was trying to figure out how you was going to play your sport. You was thinking about the party for the weekend. Every single day you were occupied in wickedness. But when it comes to the truth, you take breaks. You say, yo, I need, a t- I need some rest. It's, it's, it's difficult for me to serve God every single day. It's difficult for me to read every single day. I just don't have the time. But in the world, you had time to do evil. You got time to scroll through TikTok. You got time to be on Facebook, but you don't got time to read. You're not going to fool God in the end. He's looking for people that wholly serve him. Read that again. If uh, Sirach chapter 33, verse 27, send him to labor that he be not idle. Uh-huh. For idleness teacheth much evil. And that's saying the same thing as Proverbs 18. That idleness will teach you much evil. It will put you in a situation where now you start to go away from God. Because guess what? You got free time. You take that free time. You say, you know what? I'm going to look at something else. I'm going to go on TikTok. I'm going to scroll. Then you, you end up on bigbooties.com. Then you end up cheating on your wife. Then you as a sister, you end up disgruntled. You see in another sister's life on TikTok, you're like, you know what? I don't like my husband that much. All of this happens because you're not busy enough. Because you're not busy enough. You need to be busy in order to wholly follow the Lord. Give me Luke uh, 20, 12 and verse 43. If you got anything, Alicia, feel free. Jump in. Read the book that. of Luke, chapter 12 and verse 43. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. He's going to find a servant doing work. When Christ comes back, he wants to find you occupied. There's another parable where he says, occupy until I come. Read. Of a truth I say unto you. That's what he said. He said, you said, mm, over there, so I got to repeat it. He said, occupy until you come. He didn't say be idle. When you come back, I want you to be twiddling your thumbs saying, hey, I'll go to the Sabbath every week, but I don't do anything the other six days. It, he says six days. Give me that real quick, Exodus, real quick. That's what I'm telling you. It's repeated over and over and over again in the Bible. It's repeated over and over and over again in the Bible. Read that. The book of Exodus. You want to start verse eight? Yep, go ahead. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 8. And this stuff is just popping in my head because, again, the Lord, when he mentioned servitude, he mentioned work. Mm-hmm. It was day in and day out. Go ahead. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Uh-huh. Six days shalt thou labor. We are coming upon the, sa- the Sabbath day. But before the Sabbath day, he says six days you were supposed to labor. How many of us didn't labor these six days? But we talking about I can't wait to get another rest day. You've been resting all week. You've been resting all week. Now you want the Sabbath day to do what? Lay down again? Hey, officer, they yeah. think that six days is just only working for Esau. That's exactly where their mind and is not, at. And not, I, I, work, I work six days. Yeah, work, they work Sunday to Friday. I work all six days. Right. But didn't do nothing for the truth. Right. Because in their mind, the six days is to labor for because they, they think of themselves as servants unto the white man. Mm-hmm. It shows you you hate God. You don't see in that verse six days the labor was supposed to be done unto God because we're supposed to be ruling the earth. So when he mentioned that, he didn't mention that for you to be in service to the white man. He was mentioning that for you to serve him. So these six days you have to serve me, do what I need you to do for me. I'm going to give you a day off. I'm going to give you a day off from that. But you don't even see that you're not building your kingdom. You establish theirs. You keep theirs afloat day in and day out. But you say, yo, I want a break. I want a break. I want a break from serving the white man, and I'm going to come serve you, God, for one day. Go ahead. And they look at the, when they hear the rest day, they really think, like, oh, man, I, it's for me to take a break. Some brothers might not actually show up to the school and be like, man, look, I need, I need to take this rest day. I need, yeah. to, I need to lay down. I need to lay down. I'm, t- <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> and, you know, oh, yeah. It's not, it's not a, 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 a physical rest. It's a spiritual rest. There we go. You know, so we can there be around go. each other. Mm-hmm. And not, not for you to, you know, actually be like, you know what, I'm going to take a, 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 you know, a nap day or whatever. You are hundred percent right. They lay down and they go to bed. You know what I'm saying, or or they t- they put no effort in. They say, you know what, I'm not gonna build myself up to the point I could go to camp. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna come to two, uh, uh, camp one on one during the week because on Thursday, yo, that's my rest day. I got out of work. You know, I got out of work. I'm tired. Yeah. That's my rest day. Well, guess what? You've been keep you've been keeping mini Sabbaths all week. Then you get to the big one and you say, yo, I want to lay down some more. Damn. Says six days shall you labor. I don't understand. Right? Go back to Luke 12 and verse 43. You're supposed to be tired pushing this truth. Give me, give me that real quick, Michael Fortin. You're supposed to be tired pushing this truth. That, that's why all these things is coming to my head because you're not supposed to be in a situation where day in and day out is, is comfortable. You're supposed to be. The reason we're here, because when the Lord made it comfortable for us, we did not want that. We read that in verse 47 in Deuteronomy 28. We didn't want when he made it comfortable. We said, I don't want to serve you in joyfulness for the abundance of all things. So he said, I'm going to make it difficult. I'm going to make it difficult to serve me. Now it's difficult, and you say, yo, I'm just, I'm not going to do it. Read that. 
Uh, you can give me either or. Give me either or. Okay, I'll get you one. Give me uh, pain and labor. All right, the book of Micah, chapter 4 and verse 10. Be in pain and labor to bring forth. You see what the Bible says? He says, be in pain and labor to bring forth. Go ahead. Oh, daughter of Zion. You're supposed to be in pain them six days, working hard. But a lot of y'all ain't working hard. A lot of y'all is taking six days off, and then the Sabbath is the seventh. You don't read every single day. You're not serving the Lord every single day. So how are you going to be prepared for the Lord's kingdom when it comes? Are you going to be ready to serve him? Or are you going to be like, dang, he got me doing stuff every day. Dang, I got to be a mother every day. I got to be a father every day. I'm telling you, brothers, take days off from being fathers. Brothers, take days off from being husbands, from being uh, uh, wives. Sisters, take days off. You take days off at your job. You're supposed to be working. You're looking for an opportunity to take a break. I'm not telling you, yo, keep running yourself ragged. There's going to be a need for rest because, again, we're in this flesh. This flesh is willing, but it's weak. But you shouldn't be, that shouldn't be your M.O. Right. You shouldn't have a dang consistency of that thing happening every single week. Some brothers, they don't, you know, throughout a whole month, they can't show up for, to things outside of the Sabbath. Right. You know, to help out. You know, you have you have all this time that you could have fi figured out. You know, it may, maybe you have a, a really hectic work schedule, but there's probably a, there's an opportunity somewhere in there so you can be consistent and coming and doing something for the truth. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of brothers is wishy washy. You know what I'm saying? Right. They hear they hear one day and then you know what I'm saying they they take some, you know, like a week or two off and they might come back. You know what I'm saying? But then three weeks later they're not there. So we got to be more consistent with right. doing the work of the Lord. Right, go ahead. Can I get one scripture? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Ecclesiastes 5 and 12. Because uh, like what Officer Lish, Officer J.D.L. been bringing out, as servants, um, we shouldn't be in that mode of just sleeping or resting. We got to be in pain. It's going to be tired. Some days it's going to be tired, but we got to push ourselves. But again, it's not saying that we can't sleep, but let's, let's see who sleeps for. It's good for, read. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 12. The sleep, the of sleep or the rest, read. Of a laboring man. Of a, what type of man? Laboring man. Uh huh. Is sweet, right? The Bible's saying a labor, the sleep for a rest for a laboring man, someone who's putting in work for the Lord, right? Doing all he can to be a, a servant unto God and to his people, right? That is sweet for him, read. Whether he eat little or much, uh huh. But the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. That's all I wanted. All right, let's go back to Luke. Let's read Luke 12 and verse 43. Yes, excellent points, right? Luke 12 and verse 43. Let's go back to it. The book of Luke, chapter 12 and verse 43. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Yep. Of a truth, I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. So he'll be made ruler because that servant stayed uh, in the work. He stayed occupied, right? He found him doing the right thing. Go ahead. But, and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Christ ain't come back yet. Go ahead. And shall begin to beat the men's servants and maidens. He started treating his brothers and sisters around him bad. He started dealing with them wrong. Go ahead. And to eat and drink and to be drunken. He started to eat, drink. He started to uh, be, be worldly in a sense, right? Go ahead. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him. He's going to come in a time where you are not paying attention, where your mind is not on servitude. That's when he's going to come back, when you're taking that break. You're going to get fired on your day off, Smokey. That's what's going to happen. That's what brothers don't realize. The Lord is going to fire people on their day off. I know it's a line from Friday, and we think it's funny, but that's what the Lord coming to do. That's why I say he's coming like a thief in the night. So in your mind, how can you notice and say, I'm going to take days off? Why, why would that be your mindset? You setting yourself up for failure because when he pop up, you're going to be like, damn, well, the boss coming. Damn, I wasn't supposed to be on my phone. Shoot. And they see you. You know, you ever got caught on your phone somewhere you wasn't supposed to be on your phone? Yes. What you what you do? You just you just shrivel up. Fumble. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, oh. Hey, hey, caught, uh, caught, caught me slacking. I'm oh. like, hey, uh, you know, you got to play it <laughs> off. Like, hey, um, what, what you doing here? You slowly moving it <laughs> yeah. back like you got, trying to grab something. <laughs> like you ain't get caught. <laughs> Like you ain't get caught. I'm telling you, everybody been there. But when Christ come back, you ain't going to be able to slide the cell phone down. Nah. And, and, and it'd be all right. You know what? Yeah, we need him. You know what I'm saying? We can't fire him today. Christ's going to be like, all right, kill him. Because he wasn't occupied in doing the work. Read that. Verse, Verse 46. Again. Yep. The Lord of thy servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder. Will do what? And will cut him in sunder. He's going to cut you up. Go ahead. And will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Go ahead. And that servant. They think we serve white Jesus. 
They think that because the white Jesus, white Jesus never wanted you to do nothing. So white Jesus, you took the whole week off when you were serving white Jesus. You went to church. You might have sung in the choir, maybe. You might have did something for the youth. You only did that on Sunday morning. You got ready that Sunday morning to sing later that day. You got you got ready if you had a little play in the church. You got ready that morning. You went to Sunday school. You went you went up there early. They, your parents took you. You learned your little lines. You went there. You butchered them. You went there. You butchered them. You said, and the Lord. You had a little piece of paper. And the Lord said, uh, Easter. You ain't you ain't put no effort into serving God and white Jesus. But now you got to put effort in, or else you're gonna get cut up. That's what the Bible say. Read verse forty-seven. Verse forty-seven. And that servant which knew his Lord's will. And prepare not himself. So the servant that knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, go ahead. Neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. You're going to be beaten with many stripes. The one that didn't prepare himself, the one that didn't have his mind occupied in servitude, the one that didn't wholly follow the Lord. So a servant is not oblivious to the expectations that set for them. That's what that's saying. A servant knows what the master wants from them, and they do it. Day in and day out, they don't wait for the master to come and say, you're not doing your job. Because if he got to, we read in here, he said he's going to cut you asunder. He's going to whoop you. Why would you want that for yourself? They go back to that point you said about the scripture will pop into your brain. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like you don't know this type of stuff. You learned it. You hear, you hear learning it, and it pops into your head, but then you ignore it. It's, it said, which knew his Lord's will. Hmm? Just like Eve. Eve knew her Lord's will, did what she wanted. We know the Lord's will. We're in here studying every single week. We know what we're supposed to be doing. We know we're supposed to try to read four chapters a day. We know that what the leadership said on uh, earth is set in heaven. We know that. But we say, you know what? I ain't going to read them four chapters. That's difficult. That's hard for me. You think that's coming from man? You think the man, you think you think bishop is setting that standard? Or the Lord set that standard? It's, it's, we don't think about it that way because we're not in the mind to serve the Lord. We say, you know what? I'm gonna read what I'm gonna read what I want to read. I'm gonna read one chapter, and I'm not gonna watch no classes. A as many times as Deacon Asaph says, "Yo, y'all ain't watching classes all week. You don't watch classes all week. How can you do that? I can't do that." But brothers do it every week. It, it, it shows where your mind is at, and unfortunately, you're gonna get judged for it when Christ returns. Exodus four and ten. You got some? Exodus four and ten. I'm done on that. There was more, but I'm going to go to Exodus 4 and 10, right? So, and then, uh, sis, get that video ready for me. Exodus 4 and 10. The book of Exodus, chapter 4 and verse 10. The, uh, the YouTube short. Read that. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I'm not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. So, Moses knew his position. That's why I'm pulling this. He, he referenced himself as a servant. So a servant knows their place. A servant don't say, you know what, I got this rank now. I got this purple shirt. I'm putting in work. You got to respect me. You got to put some respect on my name. A servant didn't do that. A servant kept their mind in the place that it should be. So we're going to watch this video real quick, this YouTube short. You got to uh, play the sound. It's in the top right. You see where next to where it says play? Yeah, unclick that. I want them to hear what, what it's saying. And then we could go ahead and play that. That in the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. This! Did you know that in the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, in the first episode, Will tells Jeffrey not to call him Master? Hey man, it's cool if you just call me Will, man. Master William, tradition dictates that a clean, unbreakable line be drawn between a family and their butler. For the entire rest of the show, he refers to Will as Master William. It's not until the finale episode, after he is relieved of his duty, that Jeffrey says, Goodbye, Will. Did you know right, that in the Fresh Prince of Bel Air? So the, the point I'm making by pulling this is, he didn't cr he didn't blur the lines between him being a servant. He didn't make himself equal with God. He didn't make himself equal with men above his position. He said, "You know what? I'm a servant. I'm gonna play my role until my duty is done. That's when I'll break my responsibility. I'll, I'll, I'll view equate myself as equal. But we got a job to do." We in servitude mode, so we should constantly be thinking, hey, I'm a servant, I'm a servant, I'm a servant. Give me uh, uh, Numbers 12 and verse 3. Watch this. Watch this. Because we have to understand this, man. If we don't understand this, we're going we gonna to fall out. We're going to say, you know what? I got some understanding about it. I know more than that man above me. 
but he's been a servant longer than you. You under that man. You serving him too. We're going we gonna to get to that next. You got to serve him too. You got to serve the men that are over you. But in your mind, you say, you know what? I'm going to break the line. I'm going to stop calling him officer. I'm going to stop calling him captain. I'm going to call him by his first name. You broke the lines. You broke that line of communication. You don't see order. And that's what that's what Jeffrey understood. Again, none of us want to be Jeffrey, but Jeffrey was in the spirit. He called him his rank the entire time. Master William. Read that. Numbers 12 and 3. The book of Numbers, chapter 12 and verse 3. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And so the Lord- Moses was very meek. He was meek. He was humble. He was obedient. He wasn't a man where you had to say, hey, I'm going to force you into submission. Obviously, you know, he stepped out of line because, you know, niggas is wicked and they make you they make you very upset at times, you know. So he did step out of line at some point in time, and the Lord made him pay for it, you know. But the biggest thing we got to be able to see is when he was walking around, he was patient and obedient, and he was humble. He was a servant who understood his role and his responsibility to the people. Give me uh, Matthew 10 and verse 24. You looking for some? Uh, Matthew 10 and verse 24. Yeah, now, even though he was, you know, he had, he was raised up in a higher rank, you know what I'm saying? But he still was able to have that sort of mindset, you know what I'm saying? So right. a lot of us, we come from nothing. Mm. So why you st- why you think think so highly of yourself? Yeah, exactly. You come, you know, you come from the bottom, and now you get a purple shirt and some responsibility, and now you're the grand poopa. Now everybody got to honor you and respect you. Oh, you're a soldier, and you're doing what you're supposed to do. And you think, hey, you're supposed to treat me differently because I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. We're going to read about it. We're going to read about it. That's the problem with us. We don't understand what servitude look like. If Jeffrey got a sandwich, he ain't supposed to get no credit for getting a sandwich. We're going to read about it in the Bible. So I, I'm not making it up. No, 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 no. Matthew 10 and verse 24. We're going to go to it. Yeah. The book of Matthew chapter 10 I'm and verse ju- 20. I'm jumping the gun. Now, let's just start me up, man. Because this is ridiculous, man. I, I, I really don't think we understand what we've been called to do. Right? And, and, and even me, myself, I'm learning more and more as time goes on. But we don't understand what it is to be a servant. We read that word and we just skip over. We say, okay, we just do what God tells us to do. But we don't understand the depths of it. Matthew 10 and verse 25. The ma- uh, verse 24? Verse 24. The book of Matthew, chapter 10 and verse 24. Yep. The disciple is not above his master. So the disciple is not above his master. You are never above the people that are over you. You're never above Christ. Go ahead. Nor the servant above his Lord. Go ahead. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master. It's enough if you be equal to Christ at one point in time. Later. Go ahead. And the servant as his Lord. Go ahead. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? So think about that. You are of Christ's household. So you're going to get called certain things. You're going to get disrespected. Why do you feel like that ain't going to happen to you and it happened to Christ? That's the problem we have. So when it happens, brother, say, you know, I'm going to stop being a servant. Did Christ stop being a servant? When people ridicule him, when people didn't have faith in him, they didn't believe in him? When he was walking around healing people and people was like, I don't think he can heal me. I don't think that's the Messiah. He didn't change his behavior because he felt like he was supposed to be respected. Matthew 19 and verse 16, he did what he was supposed to do because he understood his role and his position. My role and my position is to be humble and come here and do what the Lord told me to do. That's what Christ came and did. He became a servant. Matthew 19 and 16. The book of Matthew chapter 19 verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master. So somebody came up to Christ. He said, good master. Go ahead. What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Go ahead. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? This shows you the mindset of Christ. Why are you calling me good? Why are you telling me that I'm good? Read. There is none good but one. That is God. We don't have this mindset. You start doing something right and your brain say, yo, I'm, I'm straight now. I'm killing it. But Christ's mind ain't work like that. Somebody told him, yo, you're doing something good. He said, no, 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 no. There's only one good. There's God. How many people reply back to brothers like that? Brother tell you you're doing something good. You don't reply back and say, there's none good but God. You take it and you say, ooh, I'm, oh, I'm doing good now. You put an S on your, yeah, 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 yeah. Dang, you said S on your chest. I'm cut. I used to call myself that on the radio when I was in uh, college. You know what I'm saying? Cut. You know what I'm saying? But my point is, is, is that's how you think. You think you're killing it. You think you are you are killing it because somebody gives you a compliment and, and, and appreciates the work that you're doing. But Christ said there's none good but God. Go ahead. Give me uh, Luke 17 and verse 7 now. So we understand our role and responsibility if we serve us. We don't ever get too high-minded. 
Just like we read about, uh, we looked at with Jeffrey. Jeffrey never got to a point where he said, you know what, man, Will, cool with me. I'm going to stop calling him Master William. We equal now. We equal now, exactly. We equal now. Maybe this captain cool with you. Maybe this officer cool with you. Maybe this deacon cool with you. Maybe the bishop cool with you. But you ain't supposed to break that line of 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 uh, 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 of servitude, and you should definitely not break it with Christ. Some brothers, some brothers call Cap. They be like, "Hey, hey, Zab." Yep, <laughs> yep. I hear it. I'm like, what the heck? Yep. Yeah. You've been here since two days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You've been here two days, but you don't have respect. You see what I'm saying? You don't have that respect. You don't. You don't understand. You're supposed to be a servant. You wouldn't go to your job. You wouldn't go to your job and call people out of title and character. Nobody does that. You know what I'm saying? For brothers in the armed forces, you don't go on base and start calling people by their last name. You say chief. That's what you say. You say chief boss. Your voice changed when you say it too. You don't, you don't, you don't say it just like you talking to the boys. You know what I'm saying? There's certain brothers that you in the same rank where you might just be like, Johnson, what up? You know what I'm saying? But the chief is different. You go in there trembling. You don't break that line. Because there's respect there. But why you don't respect the men of God like that? Why do you don't respect Christ like that? You don't see him as men of God. You don't there, see Christ. There you go. You see what I'm saying? You don't see you don't see the need to serve him. Mm-hmm. You don't see the need to serve him. You don't see that need. Read that. The book of Luke, chapter 17 and verse 7. But which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle? So you got a servant. He plowing or feeding cattle. He's asking him a question. Go ahead. Well, say unto him, by and by. When he has come from the field, go. Sit, sit down to meet. Which of you, right, if you had a servant, he was, he was plowing the field, you would say, you know what? Hey, man, you did a, you did a good job, man. Just, just go ahead and stop for the day. Huh? Where does that work at? No one, go, no, no one drops their car off at the mechanic shop, pull up, you know what I'm saying, the next day with lunch for the guy. Like, hey, man, take a break. Yeah, don't they, work, don't work they, no more. They keep calling like, hey, you finished yet? <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> exactly. that's your job. As a mechanic, you got to be fixing cars. As long as you're on the clock, that is your responsibility. But when it comes to this truth, brother's looking for a break. That's why he asked him this. Keep going. And will not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup and gird thyself and serve me. He said, yo, I need dinner. Yo, after you're done doing that, I got something else you need to do. Come over here and make me a sandwich. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. Till I've eaten and drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. So after that, after he got the food ready, I'm going to eat and drink. Go ahead. Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? Do he say, you know what, man, you you an excellent servant, man. I appreciate you. You did that thing in the field you were supposed to do. I mean, you served me, you know. And then you made that sandwich. That sandwich was fire. I mean, you're supposed to serve me, but thank you for making that sandwich. No, that's not how it work. And it's not going to work that way with God. We're going to prove it. Read the next verse. I trow not. I think not. Go ahead. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, Say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. But we don't think this way. We don't got a sense of duty. We think we're supposed to get a pat on the back for doing what we're supposed to do. Yo, yeah, this is what I'm saying. This Esau system, right? You're supposed to get the participation yeah, trophy for yep. showing up. Yep. Yep. That's, that's people's mindset. You in the troop, you want a participation trophy. You a soldier talking about, yo, I got to remind people of different things. So because I remind them, you shouldn't get on me. What? You doing what you're supposed to do. What are you talking about? If if you get removed, the Lord gonna send somebody else up in here to do your job. Your job ain't that important. Me teaching this class just because I'm sitting here don't mean the Lord will say, you know what? He off. He ain't doing what he need to do. I'm gonna put somebody else right in that same seat, and daily bread will continue. Just like there was men teaching daily bread before I got on the schedule. Not because they're wicked what they removed, but the point is, is other people can do your job. Other people can do your job. But in your brain, you think you're doing something extra special. And, and that's what we don't get. When you got a sense of duty, you say, yo, I'm just going to continue to do my job, and I'm not going to do it for handouts. I'm not going to do it because somebody needed to praise me here on earth. I'm doing it because I understand where my reward is going to be in the kingdom. And then, Go ahead. You know no, saying, no, go ahead. And then if they're not getting it or you, know, or you get, get the opposite, now they don't want to do it anymore. It's like, unappreciated. Right. Like, they ain't appreciating what I'm doing for the well, for the for the body. I was gonna say that because going on, you said something earlier, saying the same thing, like in Proverbs twenty nine and one. Read that one because, it, like you said, if they don't, if they're not getting that um, 
they get feedback or they get negative feedback like oh you didn't do this right or this what you know what i'm saying now they don't want to do work at all read it real quick the book of proverbs chapter 29 and verse 1 mm -hmm. he that being often reproved Harder than it is net. That's what happens. Sometimes, brother, you, you tell them something, you're like, hey, man, you got to get this right, this right. You know what I'm saying? And then that for them, that just harden their neck. They get more disobedient. Like, nah, I don't, well, shoot, I don't like that. Go ahead. Keep going. Shall suddenly be destroyed. But you see what, you, what your end result is going to be? It's going to be destruction. So if you're getting corrected on something, it's for you to fix it, not for you to harden your neck and become more rebellious. You're supposed to be like, you know what? Let me fix my issues. But then uh, instead, you want that destruction that's going to come. Because, again, in your mind, you think you're doing something extra special. You think you're a magical Negro. That's what brothers think. You think you are the one magical Negro. You came in here, you're going to you're gonna read this Bible. You're going to get more understanding with, than Bishop. And you're going to be able to put us all in line, and we're going to go back to God from your words and your efforts. The Lord don't need you. And that's how we got to think. I'm lucky to be here. That's how the servant in the scripture that we just read should think. Because... Guess what? If you don't do the job somebody else will, and you just won't get paid. You got the options of death or eternal life. Those are your options. Do what you're supposed to do. Get eternal life. Don't do it. Die here. I, look, I don't need nothing else. You gave me my options. You finna cut heads off? Shoot, I'm finna just go do what I need to do and stay out the way. You know what I mean? If you was trapped in a, in a camp somewhere, and those were your options, yo, just do what you're supposed to do, or die, get your head cut off. You would just start doing what you need to do. Shoot. Pick this cotton. The best picking cotton Negro here. Uh, or they, you, they get a job, and then they don't like that job. So they're like, no, I prefer to do this right here. Right. But the Lord gave you a job to do that you right. can put your work into. You know, you know, nobody is homeless on the street, and someone offers them a job, they're like, I'm going to wait. <laughs> that, 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 I'm going to wait. There's that's a, that's going to be another one coming. Like, man, the dude gave you a job. You're homeless. Get it, man, go get some money. <laughs> What's wrong? But we don't think like that. Yeah, we don't know, think that way. When it comes way. to the Lord. We, yeah, man. Give me, give me Sirach 3 and 17. You're 100% right. Brothers do be trying to uh, you know, do whatever office you want. I'm like, nope. Sirach 3 and verse 17. The book of Sirach, chapter 3 and verse 17. My son. Go on with that business and meekness. And that's what Jeffrey did. That's what Moses did. That's what Christ did, right? I'm using a worldly example because sometimes y'all get the worldly, the worldly example more than the biblical example. But we got to be able to see it in the Bible. They went about their business and meekness. Go ahead. So shalt thou be beloved of him that is approved. Go ahead. The greater thou art, the more humble thyself. And thou shalt find favor before the Lord. So the greater you become, it's in your humility. The more humility you have, you actually are greater to the Lord. You are of value to the Lord because you start to serve. You start to serve. Give me Proverbs 14 and 35. Proverbs 14 and verse 35. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 35. The king's favor is toward a wise servant. So a servant was supposed to be wise. He was supposed to understand these different things. He wasn't supposed to be uh, uh, doing things in an idiotic fashion, right? I'm going to say it like that. You got the Bible. You a servant of God. You're supposed to have wisdom. He's supposed to say, you know what? I'm going to leave this to you. This is your responsibility. You're supposed to look in the Bible and do things properly. That's his expectation for you as a servant of the Lord. He didn't make Moses a servant of the Lord for Moses to destroy the people. Mm -hmm. But brothers is doing things like idiots, saying, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go get counsel from the sister before I reach out to my officer. That's idiotic. That's not what the Bible say. The Bible don't say that. The Bible don't say don't hit up your officer, hit up sister first. That's not in the Bible. Read it again. The king's favor is toward a wise servant. Yep. But his wrath is against him that causes shame. Give me uh, Sirach 3 and verse 18 one more time. The book of Sirach chapter 3 verse 18. Yep. The greater thou art, the more humble thyself. So as a servant, you became humble, right? You say, you know what? I'm going to humble myself to the Lord, right? Go ahead. And thou shalt find favor before the Lord. You start to find favor before the Lord. And what else happens? Go ahead. Verse 19. Yep. Many are in high place. He looked at me like, what am I supposed to read? I can see you out the corner of my eye. Go ahead. Keep reading. <laughs> and of renown. <laughs> He's like, what does he want here? I don't know what he wants. Read verse 19 again. Verse 19. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. The brother looked at me like, you, you want that? You want? Yeah, that's right. You sure? That's not what you, yeah, that's not where I would go. Read that. I, we got to learn servitude, Israel. That's what I'm telling you. Brother's supposed to be reading. He looking at me like, I'm just, you sure? That's what I want. I got it written down. Read verse 19. Verse 19. Many are in high place and of renown, 
But mysteries are revealed unto the meek. The mysteries of the Bible, the understanding of the Bible is revealed unto those who are humble. So as a part of humbling yourself, you got wisdom from the Lord. Go ahead. For the power of the Lord is great, and he is honored of the lowly. He starts to give wisdom to those that are lowly, those that honor him, those that want to be in a servant mindset. So when you get that wisdom, you're expected to use it. You're not expected to get wisdom and then still do the same things over and over again. But what brothers do is they get the wisdom of the Bible, and they don't follow that. They do what they want. You've been in here for year after year after year after year. And you say, you know what, I'm still not going to follow the Bible. I'm going to watch Sabbath class online when I could just come down to the school. Ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm just going to keep watching online. I know I'm supposed to keep the Sabbath. I used to teach people that they're supposed to go to the school and keep the Sabbath and gather together. But I'm going to watch online because ain't nobody saying nothing to me. Well, God is watching you, understanding that you have the wisdom. Go ahead. Now, uh, going to the point where, you, where it reads, you know, many are in high place. Uh, what was that? The greater thou art, more humbly than thyself, right? It's, it's sometimes uh, so, like soldiers' job is to clean the school, right? You know what I'm saying? Some brothers, they will become an officer, then they won't even touch a broom. You know, they, they'll, be, they'll be like, even though there might be a need for it. So it's like you can, you can see on some brothers that, like, they they looking for the rank, like you said, you know, so that they can feel, not not before they can be humble or become better servants because they want they just want to be a top. Right. You know? So I, I I don't want to throw off your point, but no 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 that's a, that's a great point because what it is is they don't they don't see that the, the the they don't see the upside down triangle that is leadership. Brothers view Bishop as he's on top. Bishop is on the bottom of an upside down pyramid. You got all the women and children right, and the new people that come in. They at the top of the they at the top of this upside down pyramid. At the bottom is Bishop holding everybody up. The bishops is holding everybody up at the bottom. Then you got you got above them. You got the deacons. They holding the deacons up. The deacons holding the captains up. The captains holding the officers up. It's upside down. So when you when you are growing in leadership, you are going down the totem pole because you understand I have to serve more people. That's what we're looking at here. But brothers don't see it that way. They view it as, hey, I'm not supposed to do certain things when I get to a certain level. I get it. You have your roles and responsibilities, but to your point, there may be a need for that. There may be a need for that at a certain given time. So you can't look at it and say, I'll never do it, right? And that goes back to that wisdom that we're talking about. You're supposed to have the wisdom to understand what this is, what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, Psalms 119 and 140. Psalms 119 and 140. Let's read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 140. Thy word is very pure. Thy word is very pure. This is the words of the Bible. Go ahead. Therefore, thy servant loveth it. Thy servant do what with it? Therefore, thy servant loveth it. The servant loves the words of God. He loves the words of God. And he's going to take his words and read the next verse. I am, I am small and despised. I am humble and despised. I'm on the bottom. Right? Go ahead. Yet do I not forget thy precepts. I am not going to forget the Bible. I'm going to keep the Bible in my mind. I'm not going to be in the line. I've been a soldier for six years, and I can't get basic milk questions right. I'm not going to be failing tests because I don't study. I don't pay attention. To, I'm going I'm to push myself. I'm going to get better because I'm a servant to you, God. Read verse 141 again. Verse 141. I am small and despised, yet do I not forget thy precepts. Yet do not I. Yet do not. Yet do not I forget thy precepts. So there is no thought process where a servant says, you know what, I'm just going to forget. I'm going to be stupid now. I'm going to be dumb. Nobody wants a dumb servant. Nobody wanted Jeffrey to be an idiot. You know, another servant is Alfred, right, from Batman. He got to use his brain. He got to use his brain. Yo, I need a, uh, an assistant ain't supposed to be an idiot. So if we are servants to the Lord. We ain't supposed to be down here with no understanding what the Lord wants, just moving and doing what we want to do. We're supposed to do everything according to the Bible so that we don't create confusion. Give me uh, Amos 3 and verse 7. That's what we're supposed to do. Amos 3 and verse 7. The book of Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing. But he reveals his secret unto his servants, the prophets. See, the prophets, his servants, they understood the secrets of God. They understood what the Lord wanted from them. So when they understood it, they were held accountable for their actions. That's what we got to be able to see. There's no dumb servants in the Bible. Abraham wasn't a dummy. Isaac wasn't a dummy. Moses was a, Moses was, give me that in Acts real quick so we can look at that. People think uh, Moses was a dummy. Moses wasn't a dummy. These men were walking around doing things outside of the order of God and making foolish decisions. 
They say, you know what? I'm going to take pride in being intelligent. That's what the men in the Bible did. That's what these servants did. When they learned what God wanted of them, they did it. Read that. The book of Acts, chapter 7 and verse 22. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. So Moses was learned. Learned. That's the key word there. He wasn't a fool. And even the men that you look at, you say uh, Peter and the apostles, they said they, their speech was of, uh, like they were unlearned. But you know what they did know? They knew what God required of them. They understood that. They, they didn't take that for granted. They didn't say, oh, I don't know what God want from me. They talked about it. When you read the letters in the, in the New Testament, they talked about God wanted me to do certain things. Give me this real quick in Peter. It's, it's a reason why. There was a spirit on them uh, where it says, uh, 1 Peter, I think it's 1. Yep, 1 and 10. Yep. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 1 and verse 10. Yep. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. Go ahead. Who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Searching what? Or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify. The spirit signify. of Christ was in them. The spirit of Christ was in them. So the spirit of Christ ain't a spirit of foolishness. It's a spirit of understanding. That's what the Bible said. Give me Isaiah 11 real quick. Real quick. So the spirit of Christ was in these men. And all you men and you sisters, anybody that's in here that you understand anything about this Bible, the spirit of Christ has to dwell in you for you to understand it. That's not a spirit of being an idiot. Isaiah 11 and verse 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 11 and verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Let's see what that Spirit is. This is talking about Christ. Go ahead. The Spirit of wisdom and the, understanding. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. Go ahead. The Spirit of counsel and might. Counsel and might. Go ahead. The Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Go ahead. And shall make him of quick understanding. This Spirit is supposed to make you of quick understanding. Go ahead. And the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. So the spirit of Christ made these men wise, gave them understanding. This is how these men moved. They wasn't just doing what they wanted to do. They used wisdom when they did it. So therefore, give me Revelation 1 and 1 real quick. Then I'm going to be done with this point. Revelation 1 and 1. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. To show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So he showed his servants what was supposed to come. Why? Because he expected them to move based upon it. That's why. He didn't just show it to them and say, you know what, I'm going to show my servants this because, I don't know, I just want them to have deep breakdowns. He said, no, I expect you to move based upon them. He showed them things that will come to pass. Give me verse 3 real quick. Verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein. He said, you hear it, you re I mean, you read it, and then you keep what was written. You do it. So as a servant, that's what you're supposed to be doing. He didn't give you the understanding of different things in the Bible for you to not move with it. And it goes back to you being idle. There's always something you can be doing. If he's giving you more understanding daily, then there's more work for you to be doing. That's what we got to see. There's no time for you to be idle because if he comes back and he says, yo, I taught you that yesterday, you didn't move on it. Imagine if you was at your job and they say, yo, you're supposed to paint these walls. And six weeks later, they come back and the walls ain't painted. You would be fired. But for Christ, you think it's time. You think you got time to play around. You learn a precept or something you're supposed to be working on. And you say, I'm going to take my time before I fix it. You got to put more urgency upon yourself. Give me Numbers 11, verse 28. Numbers 11, verse 28. Also, a servant must be this way. Numbers 11 and verse 28. The book of Numbers, chapter 11 and verse 28. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses. The servant of who? The servant of Moses. So, although he was a servant of the Lord, he also was a servant of Moses. Go ahead. One of his young men. So, he was a servant of Moses. That was the point I wanted. So, uh, give me now uh, Daniel 9 and 10. So we must learn to be servants to the men around us, to the men above us, just like Joshua was. A servant wasn't just, hey, I take care of myself, but we ain't got that mind. We ain't got that mind to take care of nobody around us. We say, I'm going to study. We don't say, yo, let me call this brother and see if he study. Let me see if this brother's coming. Let me give this sister a call, check on her. Let me correct this sister on this. Let me uh, exhort her here. Let me give her a call and see why she's not here. We don't think that way. Let me give that brother a call and see why he's not here. Let me see why he ain't been here in a couple weeks. I got his number. Let me check. We don't serve nobody around us because we're self-serving. 
And that's what we've learned here in this white man system is to be self-serving. That's what Esau has taught us. Do what's in your own best interest, but don't give a damn about nobody else around you. And we got to break that. In order for us to rise as a nation, we got to break that mindset. Read that. The book of Daniel, chapter 9 and verse 10. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. So he set the laws before the people by the servants, the prophets. So the servants, the prophets, they always dealt with the people. They served the people. That's how they had understanding on what to do and what not to do. So you may not have understanding. You can't view that as a light thing. You have to continue to increase in that thing. You can't say, yo, I understand a little bit of the Bible, but I'm not going to study. I'm not going to learn anymore. I got these basic breakdowns. No, you have to go tell your people what needs to be done so that they don't get killed. It ain't just about you learning the wisdom so you could be a deep dummy. This ain't about you arguing with a Negro in the barbershop, man. Because that's how we think. We want to learn wisdom so we could go tell the next brother I'm smarter than you. And you're going to get destroyed for that. This wisdom is for you to serve your people with. Give me uh, Matthew 20 and verse 25. We got to learn that. We got to learn how to be servants to the men and the women around us, the children around us. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 25. But Jesus called them unto him and said, you know, you know, excuse me, you know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them. So in, in the world, the princes of the Gentiles, they, they rule by authority. Go ahead. And they that are great exercise authority upon them. Go ahead. But it shall not be so among you. Christ said, it's not going to work that way amongst y'all. Go ahead. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. Let him take care of everybody else. Whoever's the greatest is going to be, to, is going to be a servant to everybody else. That goes back to the greater you are, the more humble you are. But we don't know how to be great. We know how to be evil as hell. We know, we're wise in wickedness, but we don't know how to be great. So we got to teach ourselves. That's what this Bible is here for, to show us, man, I got to be more of a servant. Let me look for ways to be more of a servant. A servant ain't supposed to be slothful. A servant's supposed to know the Bible, but he's supposed to take care of the people around him, not just himself. He ain't supposed to just get that information and sit on it. He's supposed to minister unto the people around him. Go ahead. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So that's got to be our mindset. How do we serve the people? Give me Sirach 8 and 8. That's got to be our mindset. How do we serve the people? If we don't know how to serve the people, we're not going to get into that kingdom like the way we want to. Because we don't, we don't, we don't take care of nobody. Why, why would the Lord give us a kingdom for us to destroy everybody and just take care of ourselves? Sirach 8 and 8. The book of Sirach, chapter 8 and verse 8. Despise not the discord of the wise, but acquaint thyself with their proverbs. For of them thou shalt learn instruction and how to serve great men with ease. Because what we don't understand is the men above us, they know how to serve greater men than us. And that's what we're supposed to be learning. But you won't even get around the men above you to learn how to serve anybody. You won't sit around and listen to the stories or travel or do anything to build yourself up in that regard. You say, you know what, I'm going to stay home. I'm going to stay home. I'm going to figure it out on my own. I got the Bible. I'll figure out how to be a better servant. But this is telling you, in order to be a better servant, you had to learn from other men that were servants. Just like we watching the butler. Just like we watching the butler. He had to learn, yo, this is how you wipe the chandelier. This is how you don't run with the plate. You do this, you do that. Somebody had to guide him in how to be a servant. But in our mind, we think we're going to figure it out ourselves. And that shows you that we're evil. Give me some rock 39 and verse 4 now. Yeah, they don't see it. They don't see that everybody is serving. So even though you're going up from, you know, saying from the brothers all the way up to the bishop, you know, everyone's service when the bishop, he's serving the whole nation. Exactly. So he got to run himself ragged trying to, you know, save the people who ain't. Well, you know what I'm saying? Without, cause that's like the, 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 the disciples did. They said, let me give ourselves to the ministry. Exactly. So the, we, everybody, it's a circle. We all serving each other. Exactly. A hundred percent. And that, and that's what Christ was trying to show us in his example. But we don't see that. We don't see the need to deal with each other, to serve each other. Go ahead. The book of Sirach, chapter 39 and verse 4. He shall serve he among shall what? He shall serve among great men uh -huh. and appear before princes. Mm -hmm. He will travel through strange countries. For he hath tried the good and the evil among them. A man that is occupied in this Bible, because that's what this scripture is talking about, I just jump to the point, right? He's going to serve with great men. He's going to serve the people. We don't see that. We look at brothers go to Haiti and we look at that like, yo, man, they went out there and they they brought out the fire. No, they went to go serve the people. They sacrificed themselves and what they could have did or maybe what they wanted to do, right? Well, obviously what they want to do is do the work of the Lord. But the easier thing would be, yo, let me just sit at the house and not go do that. Let me not go risk my life. 
That's the easy thing to do. But when you want to serve the people, you push yourself beyond the limit that you have set for yourself previously. And that's what we got to learn. We got to get around other men who have done that to learn how to do that. We're not going to learn how to serve people if we just say, hey, let me just read the Bible and I don't talk to nobody. I don't build. I don't see the examples before me. I don't learn what other men are doing to serve the people. We're not going to you're not going to get to the level you think you're going to get to. Second Timothy, you got some? Yeah, just on that point, right? Because like you said, when people just think brothers go out there and travel, they don't understand that these brothers got families, they got jobs, they got to take time off that they probably don't have. You know what I'm saying? They got to sacrifice in order to serve people who need uh, what is not given to them at the moment. You know what I'm saying? A hundred percent. And and it's uh, it it is they realize something is more important than themselves. That's what you have to look at leadership and understand. Those men understand something is more important than themselves. And we got to learn that. We don't know that when we come in here. When you come through the doors, it's all about you and what you was doing and your evil. Then you start to learn, yo, it's, it's not about you. It's about everybody around you. 2 Timothy 22 and verse 24. Watch. Look what Paul told Timothy. You had some? I was going to say they, they, they think the sun revolves around them. A hundred percent. The sun rose up because I woke up this morning. <laughs> well, that's why, that's why you could take days off. Uh, yeah. Because your own interests, they've been fulfilled. But you don't got to serve nobody else. So that's why you could take a day over. You could say, Yo, I don't got nothing to do today because damn them other people who, who need, damn yeah. them who need to learn from me as an officer, I'm not going to read today. Damn them who might need something from me in the street, right? Who Damn the body that might need something from me. I don't care about none of that. I'm going to lay down. You're not, you're not motivated by serving. Right. 2 Timothy 2 and 24. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, and meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. So those people that go against the Bible, they oppose themselves. And the servant of the Lord wasn't to strive with them. That's what he was telling them, right? Go ahead. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. So we, we, we have to have the mindset of, hey, how do I build these people? That's what he's telling them. Be patient with them. They oppose themselves in the scriptures. But your job is to build them so that the so that God may give them an opportunity to repent and come back to the truth. But we don't view our job and our role and our responsibility that way. We look at it like, yo, I got to blast people in the street. I just got to show up and do the bare minimum. No, we were, it was always about the other people. That's what he's telling them. A servant of the Lord, they think about the people and how they move in their actions, even in their conversation. In their disagreements, they think about the, how you serve the people. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, because even with if you're working with a brother, you might feel like, oh, well, he's not, he, it's, not, it's hard to work with him, and you're not good at communicating with him. Well, if you, if you feel like they have that issue with you, maybe they have it with others. Why don't you work harder to work with them so that they can build that up in themselves? Right. You know, if you think you might have it better, you know, so hey, don't, don't not deal with them at all. You're supposed to be working with that person, helping them. That way, when they deal with the next brother, it's a, it's a smooth transition. They got that better at that. And that, that's that hatred. Mm-hmm. That's the hatred we got because rather than helping our brothers improve and serving them and finding a way to adjust to them to make sure that they get better, we say, he'll figure it out. It's hatred, right? And we got to examine it and call it what it is. We just that we have not examined that within ourselves to say, yo, I have hatred for my people, even though I'm in the truth, because I don't correct them. I don't try to get them better. I don't try to move them in the right direction. I say, I'd rather just leave you over there and let you die. That's what you're saying. Jump to here, right? So now we're going to talk about salvation for those saints. Psalms 119 and verse 125. Psalms 119 and verse 125. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 125. I am thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. It is time for thee, Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. So it's time for the Lord to work on earth, and he's worked in us. He started to give us the understanding of the Bible. He started to move us in the right direction. And now we know, hey, I'm supposed to be serving the Lord. I'm supposed to be doing what the Bible says. I'm supposed to teach other people to do what the Bible says. So Isaiah 49 and verse 6. Let's read that now. I'm supposed to do what the Bible says. The book of Isaiah, chapter 49 and verse 6. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. So it's a light thing that we're supposed to go wake up the tribes of Jacob. Go ahead. And to restore the preserved of Israel. There's a preserved of Israel that we have to go and get. More servants that we have to serve. And when they come in, they're going to serve people. Until we rule on earth, right? And the heathens serve us when it flips. But for now, we got to learn how to serve each other. We got to learn how to serve the men of this nation, the men that labor before us. We got to use all those qualities that we talked about to get ourselves to the place we want to be at. 
So we bring men in and we show them, yo, this is how you this is how you serve. This is how you become a servant. This is how you look out for yourself first off, and then you look out for the people. Go ahead. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. The salvation is going to come through you men and women that understand what the Bible's talking about already. That's how it's going to come. The women are going to teach other women how to love their husbands, right, how to, how to deal with the children. The men are going to go out in the street. They're going to teach other men, hey, come in here. You got to come in. You got to learn this. You got to do this. This is how you be a servant. This is how you serve men. And then the, the destruction of this place will come. Go ahead, give me uh, Psalms 123 and verse 2. But we don't see that. We don't see the trickle-down effect of our servitude. When we lack in servitude and we do things uh, for our own self, we slow the pace of the nation growing. We slow the fact that, hey, we should be better because we all got gifts that the Lord gave us that we're supposed to be serving each other with. That somebody else is supposed to learn from you. Well, we're slowing down each other because we hate each other. Psalms 123 and 2. The book of Psalms, chapter 123, verse 2. Behold, as the eyes of servants look unto the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God. So we waiting on the Lord God. We doing what he told us to do, but we waiting on him. We're not waiting idle. Give me Psalms 135 and verse 14. The book of Psalms chapter 135 and verse 14. For the Lord will judge his people, and he will repent himself concerning his servants. He will repent himself, meaning he's going to bring us back into rulership. But we got to do the work. We got to serve each other. We got to remember that we are servants of God. That's the only way he's going to turn what's happening to us here in Babylon. Brothers killing brothers. The co Five men kill a brother. You see what I'm saying? We got to look at stuff like that and say that's self-hatred and the fact that we don't know how to serve each other. Ain't they supposed to do what they supposed to do? Their job is to protect and do what? Serve. They don't know how to serve. We got to be the example to our people of what servitude looks like. But we don't see that. When I see something like that, I say the Bible is the medicine to fix issues like that. We're going to show the world what it looks like to serve each other. We ain't going to go and uh, beat a brother up in the street because we got an issue with him. Because he ran away. Whatever the reason it was, we ain't, gonna, we ain't even going to think that way because we understand servitude. Give me Psalms, uh, give me Isaiah 55, 54 and verse 17. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. This and, is something you hear in church all the time, but read it. Watch what it says. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. The Lord says he's going to judge the tongue that rises against us in judgment. Go ahead. This is the heritage of the servants of, of the, the Lord. Who? Of the who? This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Uh huh. And their righteousness is of me. The, the Lord said, nothing is going to go against you. If you are servant to me, there's nothing that's going to be able to stop you. You're going to get the kingdom of God. You will be saved here on earth. Give me Isaiah 65 and 13. There's not going to be an issue. But if we don't give ourselves wholly over to serving the Lord, then we're going to have all sorts of problems. Isaiah 65 and 13. The book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 13. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. In this last days, we're talking about famine. The servants, they're going to do what? My servants shall what? My servants shall eat, uh -huh. but ye shall be hungry. The Lord said the servants of God are going to eat during that famine. We're going to be okay. But the people that are wicked, that don't truly serve God, you're going to be hungry. The ones that take days off, the ones that are idle, the ones that hear all these classes coming out, you ain't moving with no pace, with no urgency, it's going to be bad for you. We have to see the fact that we need to work, work, work in order to get to where we need to be. Revelation 15 and verse 3. We wind it down. Revelation 15, verse 3. The book of Revelation, chapter 15 and verse 3. This whole book was given to the servants. So let's see what he said to the servants. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God. The servant of who? The servant of God. Moses had a song that he sung, the servant of God. Go ahead. And the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Give me um, Deuteronomy 32 real quick. Let's look at this song. Let's just look at one part of it. The song is referring to this entire Bible, but it's summarized uh, in Deuteronomy 32. I think I want to start at verse, I got written down verse 36. I think I want to jump up a little bit. Uh, start at verse 36. It's fine. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 36. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants. For his what? For his servants. Go ahead. When he see it, that their power is gone. When he sees that our power was taken away, he's going to repent himself, meaning he's going to turn back and he's going to uh, uh, allow us into salvation. He's going to see us repent and get right. 
That's what's going to happen. That's what this whole chapter is talking about. We were going to fall off. Moses wrote and prophesied, yo, y'all are not going to serve God. Y'all are going to go off. Y'all are not going to do what God tells you to do. But God is going to see us when we turn back, when we say, you know what, I'm wholly going to serve you, Lord. When I wake up in the morning, I pray, right? In the middle of the day, I pray. At the end of the night, I pray. I read every single day. I look out for my brothers around me. I go and keep your Sabbath. I keep your new moons. I keep your high holy days. When the Lord starts to see that behavior from us as a nation, he's going to say, you know what, I got to get them out of there. They don't want to serve Esau no more. They don't want to serve these other nations. They want to serve me. They got a mind to serve me. So I got to get them back to serve me. I got to put them in position. Go ahead. And there is none shut up or left. Go ahead. And he shall say, where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drink the wine of their drink offerings? Let them rise up and help you. So he said, you had other gods. Let them protect you. Go ahead. And be your protection. Go ahead. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. Mm -hmm. I wound and I heal. Go ahead. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So the Lord showed us that. And us going into slavery and us being on the bottom, he showed us that there was no other way but to turn back to him and to serve him wholly. We should take that and acknowledge that. Go ahead. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering, if I wet my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to my enemies. And will reward them that hate me. Go ahead. I will make my arrows drunk with blood. I'm going to make my missiles drunk with blood. Go ahead. And my sword shall devour flesh. Uh -huh. And that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. He said, I'm going to revenge you if you turn back to me. Go ahead. Rejoice, O ye nations, with this people. For he will avenge the blood of his servants. He will do what? He will avenge the blood of his servants. That's what's going to happen. But we got to be servants first. We can't just read that word there and say, oh, servant just mean I come to the Sabbath. There's depth to that word there. He said he's going to avenge the blood of his servants. Go ahead. And will render vengeance to his adversaries uh -huh. and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. So the Lord said he's going to deliver his servants here in these last days. That's what we got to see. That's the song we're going to be singing. We're going to say, you know what? We fell off. We didn't want to serve the Lord with joyfulness. We forgot all these things about being a servant, but then we came back to him. We learn what it's like to be uh, uh, to be disciplined, to, to learn and, and apply those things, to not be idle, to serve the men around us. We started to apply those things, and the Lord said, you know what? I'm going to revenge them now. They want to serve me. They no longer want to serve those other nations that I put them under. They want to serve me. So Isaiah 14 and 1. And when he comes and sets us in order, then things will start to be reversed. Isaiah 14 and verse 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14 and verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. And will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. Uh -huh. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And the strangers are going to be joined with us. Go ahead. But and, how? By and they how? shall Go ahead. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Go ahead. And the people shall take them. Israel shall take them. Go ahead. And bring them to their place. Uh -huh. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. The Lord said, when you start to serve me, I'll make them your servants again. Because that's how it was supposed to be from the beginning. It was never supposed to flip. The only reason it flipped is because we forgot how to serve the Lord. So he had to show us, right, through serving them, hey, this ain't what you want. This ain't what you want. So why are we still putting priority on that and not serving God? We got to start to put the priority on serving God. Go ahead. And they, shall, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. That's what the Bible says. We're going to rule over our oppressors. But we got to first be servants unto God. Revelation 7 and verse 3. Revelation 7 and 3. We got one more after this, and we're going to wrap it up. The book of Revelation, chapter 7 and verse 3, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. That's what we go out to do. We trying to seal the servants of God. When you teach, when these classes come out, it's to get those servants of God to come back. We just looking for that elect number. Go ahead, read the next verse. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. Go ahead. And there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Those are the servants. Those are the servants. The Lord said, when those hundred and forty-four thousand servants wake up and they put back on these attributes of a servant, they follow me wholly. They apply my law. They think about the men around them. They serve the nation. They're not then they're humble in their behavior. They don't break the lines of communication. They do things in order. I am going to bring destruction upon the people that hate you. Give me Romans 6 and verse 16.
That's what we got to understand. The Lord waiting on us to become servants again. He waiting on us to become servants. And when we become servants, then we're going to get out of here. Romans 6 and verse 16. The book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 16. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey? So depending on what you choose after this class or just in your life in general, you're the servant unto that thing, whether that's righteousness or sin. Go ahead. Whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Uh -huh. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, uh -huh. but ye have obeyed from the heart that, for, excuse me, but God be thanked that ye were, ser that, excuse me, but God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Go ahead. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Once you understood what it is you needed to do, you have to become the servant of righteousness. That's what we got to turn back to. Go ahead. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. Uh -huh. For as you have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, Unto iniquity. We've yielded our mind. We use our mind for sin after sin after sin to take breaks, to meddle with all types of wickedness. Go ahead. Even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. Put that effort into being righteous. Take on those attributes of being a servant day in and day out. Reform your mind so that you may be sealed so that we can get up out of here. Go ahead. For when, for when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. When you serve sin, you were free from righteousness. You weren't doing the right things. Go ahead. We're going down to 22. What fruit had you then in those things? When you did those things, you were a baby mama. You were a crackhead. You were a drug dealer. You were doing all manner of evil in the world. You weren't doing righteousness. So now you understand what righteousness looks like. You need to apply it. Go ahead. What fruit had you then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? Uh -huh. For the end of those things is death. Uh -huh. But now being made free from sin... And become servants to God. That's what we are. We're servants to God. Go ahead. Ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. So if you apply these laws, statutes, and commandments and you become a servant again, you have everlasting life. So now you got a decision to make. What you going to serve? Life or death? All right. Uh, so I'll wrap it up there uh, with that. Say shalom.